serve divorce papers and a restraining order to the stepmother of missing seven-year-old Kyron Horman. A shock, friends say, even to Terry, considering her husband, Kane, said this to K2 just Friday. How has your relationship at home changed with Terry? Has it changed at all? I wouldn't say it's changed between us. It's just a different dynamic with one of the children not being at the house. In the weeks since Kyron vanished from Skyline School, rumors swirled Terry is a suspect. But the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office has only said she's the last person known to be with the second grader. Straight to Matt Zarell, our producer, the grandfather has stated, and, and it wasn't just to us, it was to People Magazine as well, that there's a 50-50 chance that Terry Horman, the stepmother, is going to be arrested and that she had taken a second polygraph. What do we know the grandfather said exactly? Well, yeah, he said the finger points at the stepmother. He was asked, do you think that your daughter will be arrested? He said, I think it's 50-50. He talked about the two polygraphs. He also mentioned her truck getting towed. And one thing I wanted to clarify is police have told us that the reason the truck was towed is because it broke down, not because they were investigating it. But at this point, isn't it true, Matt, that she, the stepmother, Terry Horman, believes police are on her side, according to one of her friends? Yeah, the friend does tell, there are reports that the friends are saying that Terry Horman has told her friends, police tell her she's not a suspect, and she believes that the cops are on her side. You know, Mark Class, at a time like this, I, I find it hard to understand why there are sides at all. I'm sorry, hard to understand why they're what at all? Why they, they have taken sides. That she says she thinks police are on her side. When, when we were looking, in my experience with other, other people involved in these situations, the parents specifically, is that you are dominated by fear that you have one singular goal and everything else becomes a peripheral issue. You're looking for your child and you're not weighing who saw, who's on whose side, um, who's doing what to who. Um, you're totally and singularly focused on recovering your child. You're not going to the gym. Uh, you're not posting on Facebook. You're doing nothing more than looking at, looking for your child, trying to tamp the fear down and trying to, trying to tamp down the rising anger within. Kevin Miller, tell me about her postings on Facebook and her working out that Mark Class has alluded to. Well, Nancy, she was a former bodybuilder, and she made uh, postings on Facebook uh, with Kyron on it the day he disappeared. A few hours after, isn't this cute? And again, she was told, you know, when people questioned her, Nancy, they said, well, why are you doing this? And she said, well, police told me to, to act like it was normal to get on with my normal life. And the posting on Facebook was what? She made a remark about the, the photo of Kyron in, at the science fair that day. And this is after he goes missing? It was that day, I believe. Okay. Um, Kevin Miller, when was it that she was working out? She was working out uh, what, uh, during, uh, what, during the search and such. She would go to the gym, and she would, again, ask by police, from what I've heard, Nancy, that uh, she was told by police to try and get on with her life and to, you know, do these things such as working out because she's a former bodybuilder. That's a way of they, how they relieve stress by going to the gym. Okay, give me a now picture, a now picture, Dana. Everybody, that photo you're seeing is from TwixPix.com of Terry Moulton Harmon, 2005 Emerald Cup bodybuilding competition. All right, she obviously is not bodybuilding anymore, so it's not like she's under a strenuous bodybuilding regimen. To the lines, Ruby in Indiana. Hi, Ruby, what's your question, dear? Hi, Nancy. Um, have they checked the school inside and, you know, all the nooks and crannies and took dogs in and searched the school? You know, Ruby, I know a lot of people would think that's a crazy question, but remember the recent case of the Yale graduate student and her body had actually been stuffed into the wall in one of the labs? So your question is very on point. What do we know, James Pitkin, joining us from the Willamette Week newspaper? Have they thoroughly checked everything around the school, the grounds, everything? Uh, the sheriff's deputies have assured us that they have searched every probable location multiple times that the search has been extremely thorough there were 40 agencies from three states working on this search 
Back to Martin Class, president and founder of Class Kids Foundation, joining us out of San Francisco. It's not like that she is a current bodybuilder. Now she just looks normal. She just looks like a regular, everyday physique. Uh, she's not overweight. She's not out of shape, but she's not a bodybuilder. So nothing is dictating that she go and have a strenuous workout at the gym. But you and Kevin Miller are telling me that in the days after his disappearance, she was going to the gym and making Facebook postings. I can't for the life of me believe that a law enforcement official would tell a parent of a child who's just disappeared to try to get on with their normal life. Normal normal disappeared the moment the child disappeared from that point on everything changes entirely there's nothing that's fair there's nothing that's normal your routine changes your psychology changes you begin running on adrenaline you're fearful for what's happened to your child you you build up hope that disappears a little bit day after day after day after day and it's a singular focus that never changes mark i, I even hate to to hear you say all that because I remember being a crime victim and losing somebody that I loved. It was literally mm -hmm. weeks, weeks before I could even take a bite. I can still remember the first mm -hmm. thing I consumed after Keith's murder. It was um, a swallow of orange juice, and it took me I don't know how long to even do that. Out to the lines, Aline in Louisiana. Hi, dear. What's your question? Uh, thank you for taking my call, Nancy. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you have answered one of the first part of my question. Yes. What I wonder is if the authorities have considered the motive might be that she was feeling so resentful because she was raising her stepchild while her own son had to be sent away. She what about it, it, Dr. Taylor? That's an interesting point for Louisiana. I mean, I certainly think that's an important point to look at. You know, her stepson got sent away. She's in this new relationship that it sounds kind of questionable how they even got together. So it's valid. It's well, she's been relationship. in the relationship for years, though, Dr. Taylor. It's not new. Yeah, but look, she, she was hired to take care of him. It's not like we don't know how if they were dating or if it was arranged or how manipulative she was to get into that spot. And now she's got her stepson. She's got her baby daughter. And... Let us show you how the GMCC 